Hey everyone, in this video, I'll show you how to make a working hamburger menu. We'll go through the design, rigging, animation, and state machine process. There's a link to the source file in the video description if you'd like to follow along. If you just want to see the keys in the state machine, use the open and rive button on the source file and feel free to poke around. With that being said, let's get to work. Okay, so here we are in the editor and we've got a fresh file uh, with the default artboard size, so 500 by 500. And I've gone ahead and renamed the file hamburger menu uh, so I can find it later. Now we need to create our art assets. So we need three rectangles to actually uh, make this menu. So let's start by adding a rectangle. I've got the uh, rectangle tool activated with the R key and I'm just going to drag out a rectangle. Now once I've got my rectangle, I'm going to center it on the artboard. So I'm going to help, I'm going to uh, let snapping help me do that. And then change the fill from that gray to white. Now, I need another rectangle on top and another one on the bottom. Um, so what I'm going to do is duplicate this rectangle here in the center. And instead of trying to drag it up and judge the distance, what I'm going to do is align the bottom of this new rectangle with the top of the first one that we created. Duplicate the rectangle again, move it up and then delete this center rectangle here. So now this gap right here um, is the same size as these rectangles um, to keep the spacing consistent. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Just duplicate a rectangle, move it down, do it again, and then delete this center rectangle there. Okay, so we've got our hamburger menu now. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and rename all my rectangles here. So this, I'm just gonna rename this one bottom. Uh, this is the top rectangle, and this is the middle rectangle. And then I'm going to adjust them in the hierarchy so that they're in the correct order. Now, the draw order isn't really um, important for this particular file because all of our rectangles are the same color. So when they overlap, um, you won't be able to tell which one's in front and which one's in back. Um, but the reason I'm doing this is so that if I need to select them in the hierarchy, then in the correct order so I know exactly which one to uh, grab. Okay, so now to get this thing ready to animate, let's group all of our rectangles together. Put it under a root group. And remember, this root group is uh, used so that after we've animated the um, this icon here, um, we can go back and rescale it or uh, reposition it or do whatever we need to do um, without affecting any of our animation keys. All right, so this is rigged up and ready to go, and we can hop into animate mode and uh, get these animations created. So let's do that now. Okay, so here we are in animate mode, and we need to create two animations for the state machine. The uh, The first animation we're going to create is transform, uh, transforming this hamburger menu into an X icon, and then changing that icon back to this hamburger menu. So let's start by renaming our animation, uh, hamburger to X. And the way we're going to create this animation is by um, taking that top and bottom um, rectangle here, moving them away from the center to create some anticipation, moving them to the center, and then rotating them into that icon. Um, and we'll we'll have to we'll have to deal with the um, middle rectangle uh, somewhere along the lines. We'll have to turn it off with opacity. So let's go ahead and uh, start with the top and bottom rectangles. I'm going to key their initial Y position at the beginning of the timeline. Go forward to 10F on the timeline. And now we want to uh, move them away from the center of the artboard. So let's start with the top one here. So it's at negative 144.2. And I think moving it 10 in the Y is going to be good. So let's go to negative, uh, negative 154.2. And then on this bottom one, we'll go to positive 154.2. And that's moved them both away from the center by 10. All right. And now we need to go uh, take those and move them to the center. So let's go to 25F on the timeline and just drag both of those rectangles into the center of the artboard. And let's take a look at that. Okay, so that's the motion we want, uh, but we can improve it with uh, easing, but we'll do that in a minute. Let's actually just uh, finish this animation up here. So let's grab the top and bottom um, rectangles, and instead of uh, having them start rotating um, as soon as they get to the center, I'm going to give the animation a little bit of a pause, so a five, second, or a five millisecond pause there, and I'll key the initial rotation. 
and then go uh, forward 10F to 40F on the timeline. And let's rotate the top and um, bottom rectangle. So instead of going to 45, which is going to be their final um, their final position, I'm going to rotate them past that because we're going to create one more key. And I'll go to 55. And this is going to help them um, be a little more springy going into that that final position. So they're going past the final position, and then we'll go uh, 5F past 40 and move them to their final spot. So now they're um, now they're in their their last position. So let's turn off this middle rectangle here for a second. Take a look at this animation and apply some easing. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's apply easing to all these keys. I'm just going to put cubic on them for right now. Take a look, see what that looks like. Okay, so for the most part, it looks good. Um, this transition here, I'm not a big fan of. I think it needs to happen a little bit faster. So I'm going to grab these second uh, keys and just um, turn up the ease in and ease out so that there's a really snappy change somewhere here in the middle. And let's take a look at that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, now we need to address this uh, middle rectangle. So we're going to um, use opacity to turn this off. So I'm going to key the um, initial opacity here. And then go to where the rectangles collapse in the center. So at 25F, turn the opacity off. Select the first key and give it a hold interpolation. And so that will hold that 100% opacity value all the way here until 25F where it turns off. And then we don't see it anymore when we have the X icon. So, okay, I think this animation's done. Um, so now we need to create a new animation to go back the other direction and um, create the hamburger menu again. So instead of creating a new animation, I'm just gonna duplicate this hamburger to X animation and rename it. So X to hamburger. And um, now I'm going to go through all of these objects and delete out all the keys that I don't need. So I'm going to delete all the keys but the last key for each object and then drag those back to the beginning of the timeline. Just like so. Because we want to start in the uh, final position from this hamburger to X animation. Like so. So we want to start with the X, which we have now. And we're going to use this initial, this first animation here as a timing guide. So we know the first um, motion is going to take 10 milliseconds. The next one's going to take 15. We're going to have a 5 millisecond break. And then um, 10 milliseconds to get to here. And another 5 to get to the final position. So let's start with um, rotating these uh, rectangles here. So they both need to go back to 55 or negative 55, depending on which way they need to rotate. So there's 55 there, negative 55 there. All right. And then I think our next key is at 25 F and we're going to go back to this position. And then we want to stretch them out. So, or actually we need a five millisecond pause there. And now we're going to be animating the Y. So I'm going to drag the initial Y position to this point. And instead of actually trying to remember what the values are, I'm just going to go back to this animation, the hamburger to X animation. Find these second keys where the um, rectangles are in their uh, farthest point away from the center. Copy these animation or these keys here and paste them at 40 F. And then go to 45, copy and paste the first uh, position keys. Because remember, these are these are the position keys here, and this is going to be that final position. So I'm just going to copy those, paste them to 45F, and that should give us what we need. We're probably going to need to adjust the easing. Yep, we're going to need to adjust that easing. Let's move this back to a standard cubic. All right. And I think this is where, oh, I didn't apply cubic to everything yet. Let me grab all that and do that. 
<clears throat> okay, so now we have uh, cubic on everything. Um, but remember, we have a very snappy transition between this key and this key. So instead of trying to recreate that here, I'm just going to find that unique curve, which is right here on the hamburger to X animation, copy it, and apply it to these two keys. <clears throat> All right, now let's preview this and make sure it looks right. Okay, looks pretty good. We still need to animate this um, middle rectangle here. So the opacity is off at the beginning of the timeline. We need to turn it back on here where all of the rectangles are together. So let me turn that back on and then use the hold interpolation so that it doesn't change until we want it to. And there we go. We have both of our animations so we can apply a state or we can uh, add these to a state machine and get it all working. So let's add a state machine. And let's drag both of our animations onto the timeline. I've got the hamburger to X animation first, and then the X to hamburger animation. And I'm going to create transitions here. So from entry to this first animation, and then from the first animation to the second. Now we need a two-way uh, two transition here because we want to be able to uh, go back and forth between these two. And now that everybody, uh, now that everything's hooked up with transitions, we need to add an input uh, so that we can actually control those transitions. So let's add an input, and we'll use a trigger, and I'm going to call it switch. And now let's apply this um, this switch input to all of our transitions. So this uh, transition here between entry and uh, this first animation won't happen until we hit the switch. And then once that happens, it's going to get down to this portion of the state machine and just switch back and forth between these two. So let's add in that transition here or that uh, condition here and here. And let's test our state machine out and make sure everything works. OK, so we're we're on entry. So we're in the right configuration here. We're showing that hamburger menu. And when somebody clicks on it, it's going to go to an X. And then when they're ready to get rid of that, we can go back to the hamburger menu. So everything's working and uh, that's going to be it for this video. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, make sure you leave a comment in the video. We'd like to address those as quickly as possible. Um, if you did follow along, make sure you share your creation on the community because we'd love to see what you're working on. And uh, comments are actually live on the community now. So if you participate and uh, follow along and do this animation, um, I'll come and leave a comment on your um, on your animation. So uh, with that being said, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next one.